Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to your Linux open source and privacy news for the end of May 2020. This month we have Windows making a bunch of moves towards Linux, some anti-cheat announcing they will support Linux in the future, EA open sourcing some good old stuff and GNOME beating back a patent troll. Let's take a look at all of that right after this. This video sponsor is myself. Just a monthly reminder of what I'm working on and how it can help support the channel. If you're not interested, move to the designated timecode and enjoy the video. The Linux experiment doesn't stop with this channel. I also play some games on Linux, native or otherwise. I recently started a Subnautica series that's going as well as you'd expect. My character is probably some kind of junkie. No, 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 bad fish, bad fish. But I also play Stellaris and recently completed a Metro Exodus playthrough. Subscribe to this gaming channel if you're interested. You can also find all my Linux videos and all my gaming videos on library, the channel names are the same. If you want to support what I do, don't hesitate to check out my Patreon page, I'll leave a link in the description below. Patrons get to enjoy a monthly Patreon cast where I talk about Linux, stuff that's happening in my life and where I want to take the channel. You also get the warm feeling of helping me get a cup of coffee each month. Well, you would if I drank the foul stuff, but tea is life and coffee is the devil's brew. And that's it for this annoying self-promotion, now let's start with the video. May the 16th. DXVK 1.7 was released. The translation layer from DirectX to Vulkan brings support for new Vulkan extensions. These do require newer drivers though, so you'll need to use the Vulkan developer beta from Nvidia or the Mesa drivers version 20.2 at least, as well as Wine 5.8. I would wait for Proton to package this more neatly once the drivers catch up a bit. This new version also improves GPU-bound performance and fixes bugs from Fallout New Vegas, Freelancer and GTA 4. May the 17th. Enlightenment, a smaller, less well-known desktop environment, saw a new release, with version 0.24 bringing a new improved screenshot tool, support for external monitor backlight and brightness controls, and a better handling of crashes. It also starts more smoothly and better manages memory. Enlightenment is not omnipresent as GNOME or KDE can be, but it does ship on Bodhi Linux. I must say my experiences with Enlightenment date back a while, and I haven't really used it at all in the last few years, but it does look like a smooth, efficient solution. May the 19th. Microsoft announced a lot of stuff for its Windows subsystem for Linux version 2. First, they have the first release of their own terminal, and looks wise it puts to shame what we are used to on Linux. It is open source and supports WSL, PowerShell, or the good old Windows command line. They also added support for the GPU and Linux graphical applications running through WSL. This means that a Windows user could start a graphical application that's normally exclusive to Linux, and GPU support allows developers to use hardware acceleration for machine learning uses with Linux running on Windows. These new features are not yet available, but they will be in the near future. Whether that's a good thing to let developers familiarize themselves with Linux apps and their graphical interface, or if it will detract from our system of choice by giving enough access to Linux to users for Windows, we'll have to see. I'm in the cautiously waiting for more camp. Windows also took inspiration from Linux and released their first ever package manager. While it's meant more for developers and not for regular users, this will allow Windows users to install a whole development environments in one command line. The package manager, invoked with the winget command line, is open source and will allow for some scripting to allow companies to ease new recruits in and set up their whole machine in one simple step. Package managers are awesome and super powerful, and they should make people that have to stay on Windows a little bit more productive. I really like the fact that this is open source and expandable by anyone. If this is any indication of the way Microsoft wants to move on, I'm all for it. May the 20th. Not everything coming from Microsoft is encouraging though. They have coined the acronym MAUI for Multi-Platform App UI. Problem is, there is already a project with that name and that's the KDE one. The MAUI project on KDE stands for Multi-Adaptable User Interfaces and it's an open source framework that allows developers to build responsive native apps from KDE, as in apps that run on the KDE desktop and on Plasma Mobile. Now, projects sharing the same name is not uncommon, but two user interface building frameworks, this is really unfortunate. Microsoft has been reached on the issue but has no intention of renaming their stuff, although their project will probably eclipse KDE's in terms of SEO. It's a bit too bad that they didn't check this beforehand, or that they didn't care enough to actually pick something else. May the 21st. The Nouveau Anti-Cheat will support Proton. One of the nastiest DRM companies also produced an anti-cheat piece of software that flagged Proton and Wine as exploits, and blocked people from joining the various games that made use of it. 
they have announced that they will work on supporting Proton in the near future. They actually said that all games released after Doom Eternal that make use of the de novo anti-cheat will support Proton, so it could happen very soon. Doom Eternal is a game that got updated to use that particular anti-cheat tool, blocking a ton of Linux users from playing a game they bought and they were able to play before. Fortunately, the software has since been removed. It's good to see anti-cheat companies showing some support for our platform, as it might snowball, or at least give an option to devs that want to implement some anti-cheat measures and still support Linux without giving a proper native Linux version. Now, if easy anti-cheat could do the same, we could get a whole bunch of games running. Electronic Arts open-sourced parts of Command & Conquer, Tiberian Dawn and Red Alert. The engine of these games will be released as open-source code until the GPL v3. This means that anyone will be able to use this base to build a Linux native engine for these games, although they still need the original data at work, or just improve on it and make it run on more modern machines, support higher resolutions and create mods for it. This is clearly a bid by EA to make more people aware of their remaster of the Command & Conquer series, since they'll sell the remastered collection soon, but it's still a nice way to go about it. It might also backfire if their remaster efforts are subpar and the community manages to outdo them in less time with the engine source code. May the 22nd. Wine 5.9 was released, with some major progress on their own Wine D3D Vulkan backend, which might seem redundant since it basically accomplishes the same thing as DXVK, but implements it directly in Wine. I still think that having two different efforts gives more options, as one backend might be better for some games than the other. They also fixed 28 bugs, including for games like Hype the Time Quest, Age of Empires 2, GTA 5, Deus Ex, or Hitman 1 and 2, the most recent ones. Gnome won its patent dispute against Rothschild Patent Imaging, a patent troll accusing them of infringing on their intellectual property with Shotwell. The court found that the patent should never have been granted in the first place, being very generic and based on existing prior art. Gnome also won a covenant for not being sued by the same company for any other patent they could own, so they are basically in the clear from this specific patent troll. This will allow the team to focus on the desktop and software instead of fighting useless legal battles that should not happen, especially since, you know, software patents are BS. May the 23rd. Krita, the open source digital painting application, is now available for Android tablets and Chromebooks. It's still in beta and it's not compatible with Android phones since the interface would have to be retooled quite a bit to work there, but it's still awesome to see these apps available on more platforms. The application is available on the Play Store right now and can be installed on any tablet or Chromebook using Android 6 at least. May the 27th. PeerTube is a platform I have heard a lot about but that I never managed to get into, if only because finding out how to actually create a channel and upload videos there seems insanely complicated. Still, the peer-to-peer -peer alternatives to YouTube is being actively developed by Framasoft, an open source French company, and they have launched a crowdfunding campaign for their version 3.0. They want to provide a globalized video index to remove the various barriers between instances, improve the moderation tools, improve the UI and UX of playlists, and introduce a live stream feature. These goals are conditioned to reaching certain milestones in terms of funding, so if you want to support an alternative to YouTube, you can check their campaign page in the description. May the 31st. The Linux kernel version 5.7 was released with a new XFAT driver from Samsung, better performance when the CPU overheats, support for the latest Intel graphics and AMD Ryzen 400 GPUs, as well as mainline support for the PineTab, PinePhone and PineBook Pro. The 64-bit kernel can also be booted from 32-bit firmware running on compatible 64-bit CPUs. Also notable is support for Apple's USB fast charge, as well as the usual lots of bug fixes. I encourage you to wait for your distro to package and ship this kernel to make sure that it won't break anything on your machine. And that's it for May 2020. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't hesitate to like, subscribe and turn on notifications. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!